Roseburg is Tuesday, July 13th, and this is your weekly update. Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. My name is Gabe Harrell and you're watching Living Umpqua. Thanks so much for checking out my weekly update this week uh, for the week of July 13th. This week, as most of us know, hundreds of firefighters have had to respond to the Jack Fire out in the Douglas County <laughs> Umpqua Forest area once again, unfortunately. Um, you can see from some footage here, just some really nasty stuff uh, ripping through our forests. Um, at this point, the Jack Fire has burned more than 12,000 acres and it is climbing. Uh, firefighters expect to have the fire contained fully uh, by July 28th. So god bless those firefighters good luck to you all in getting that uh getting that fire contained i know all of our all of us are, are wishing you the best with all of the wildfires raging we did unfortunately lose two firefighters uh they were piloting a helicopter trying to help fight a fire in arizona um, and to me that's just a reminder of the dangerous work uh dangerous but needed work that our firefighters do. I would just like to say thank you so much for everything our wildland firefighters do and give and sacrifice every year and risk for our safety and uh, for our community. So the bootleg fire in Oregon has grown to 153,000 acres. That is tragic that we have already lost 153,000 acres just in one fire. That fire is also causing power losses in Southern Oregon as well as Northern California. And we've, been, we've had a couple towns right now on a level one alert, meaning have your stuff packed, be ready to go. Uh, and we've also had to evacuate one or two towns in this process. I'll post a link down below to a news article. Of course, there's many ways that you can get involved in helping these wildfires. One of the main things you can do is make sure, I know you've heard me all year, <laughs> at least for the last several weeks, say please, please make sure you're putting out your fires, make sure you're containing fires. If you can avoid it, just don't have a fire, right? That would be the, <laughs> that would be the ideal uh, where we're in the middle of this record-breaking heat wave and drought and everything else we got going on. So uh, just be very careful if you're using fire or fire products like fireworks or whatever it is you're doing that involves heat and fire. Please, please, please just be careful. Make sure you're being responsible out there. We all love hiking these trails. We all love fishing these fishing holes. I think all of us want them to stick around at least as much as long as we can get them to stick around so let's all do our part we need more Smokey the Bear commercials I've been saying only you can prevent forest fires the Roseburg Homeless Committee has put together a immediate ad hoc action committee uh, a Roseburg immediate needs ad hoc committee excuse me uh, that's going to be looking into ways that we can actually deliver on, um, you know, sh providing shelter to the homeless, providing programs that can help them get back on their feet uh, and providing them a way to uh, not fall back in that same position. So we have uh, luckily as a city been given a pretty good chunk of change uh, to, to try to help address this issue. And um, their first public meeting on it was actually yesterday, Monday the 12th. 
Uh, and that meeting was not going to be public at first, but after kind of a stir up, they decided to make it public. It was at 3 p.m. yesterday. I'm going to go, to go ahead and post a link to their website below where they do post previous meetings, uh, video conferences, things of that nature. Uh, now that things are opening up, you'll be able to actually go to some of those committee meetings as well if you so choose. Great way to get involved. Um, you know, you can voice your opinion, give your input into what you think might help. Lord knows we need all the great minds uh, in our community to come forward for this project because this is a problem that's, that's you know, starting to really affect a lot of people. Um, so hopefully we can figure out a way to address it correctly, help our community, help the homeless population at the same time, um, and help these folks get back on their feet um, or at least get to the help that they need because sometimes that's the case as well. Just a few weeks ago, June 27th, we actually did have a homeless woman die in the area uh, in a parking garage, which is just absolutely tragic. And so again, this goes to something that we really need to work on uh, in our community and most communities across the United States. This is something that they need to work on. So, and in fact, you know, if you look in LA, the problem is just rampant um, and it's terrible so we need to get together as a community figure this out get involved with the community action groups make sure that if you have a good idea you're sharing it with that group tonight at 7 p.m in stewart park music in the half shell is going to feature Leroy bell make sure and be there he is a singer songwriter who has even written songs for elton john which should be really exciting to see. So make sure you get there early, find a spot in the shade, make sure you take plenty of water because it's gonna be hot even at 7 p.m. and enjoy that show there at Stewart Park. I will post the link below where you can get more information about that if you need. Also, if you check this out, Douglas County Fair has posted its concert lineup for the fair this year, this summer in August. Let's take a look at that. And as you can see here, we have, uh, you know, really a, a good mix here. Everything from a country to rock and roll. Here's the schedule. Uh, I'm looking forward to the fair and the concerts this year. Um, I think they'll both be really exciting, a lot of fun. We even have a Guns N' Roses cover band you can see here. Speaking of the fair, here is a peek at some of the 2021 specials. You can uh, take a peek at this online, but here's a look for you now. You can see there's some great deals every single day of the fair this year. Make sure to get out there, have a good time, support your local community and vendors should be really exciting as it always is we missed out on it last year so super excited to take part in it this year portland police are leaving in mass from the portland police bureau uh it was a very interesting story i read a few days ago i know portland police <laughs> has nothing to do with roseburg but they are our neighbors up in portland here in oregon and it's interesting to see what that city is dealing with so we can avoid pitfalls uh, like that. And it's just really neat to be a part of a community that backs the blue, that supports the police. I think it's great. I think the law enforcement in town here is fantastic, both Douglas County and RPD. We're happy to support them. The article that I'm going to link down below even has a lot of the exit interview responses from the Portland police, uh, the the officers that are leaving. I think at this point it's over the number 30 last I, I read. Those answers are very interesting, something to keep in mind when we talk about um, police policing and police in the area. A sad story on the Umpqua River. This last week up in Oakland, a teenager did lose her life tragically in a drowning. It's always terrible to hear something like this. 
when you are out on the river, these kinds of, of tragedies are just, it's terrible to hear about. My prayers for the family, and um, it's, it's nice to know that the family has reached their GoFundMe goal, um, and so they're able to at least have that concern of some of the costs off of their plate, which is good to hear. I'll post the link to the article down below. This is also a reminder to all of us as it's been super hot outside and some of us are going out to the river. Make sure we're being safe there. Make sure we're wearing life jackets, helmets if needed, and even whistles if needed if you're going to be going through rapids and stuff like that. Just make sure you're safe. Protect yourself. Uh, be careful out there, everyone. Those currents, they can, you know, really just swoop you up without any kind of warning. So just be safe out there if you're out there on the river. Over the past few years, the stretch of I-5 between exit 119 and 129 has seen a dramatic increase in traffic incidents. And a lot of this has to do with just an influx in traffic, bottlenecking caused by some of the merging lanes between that area, and of course, some of the sharp curves coming through the area. Roseburg, in an attempt to lower that number, did reduce the speed limit to 60, but it hasn't really helped, and people aren't really slowing down for that. So the number of incidences is still keeping on pace. What we're gonna be doing is, over the next couple years, taking a look at that stretch of I-5 and seeing what we can do to improve any on-ramps or off-ramps to try to prevent bottlenecking and, and reduce that number of incidents. So that should be exciting. It's gonna be uh, some, some more work for our construction workers in the area, which is always good to hear. And hopefully we can improve it so where we're not getting, <laughs> having a bunch of incidences through our, our stretch of I-5. Now, so far, everything about the study and the program is gonna be posted on the link down below. If you're interested in learning more about that program, go ahead and check that out on the link. All right, everyone, that's it for the news. Let's go ahead and take a look at this week's Real Estate Minute. So this week in the Real Estate Minute, we're gonna take a real quick look at the Roseburg housing market. We just got in some new data from this last month, and that can provide us a clearer picture about what's going on in the market today. This is a report generated using our local MLS. And you can see here from the first snapshot that like much of the country, we've seen a double digit growth in the estimated home value from the last quarter all the way to the last 24 months. Here are the estimated home values for the last 12 months and you can see here it's all double digit growth. Now let's take a look at the actual sales price and, and here is not the estimated value, but what the homes actually sold for, we can see that for the last 12 months, we have seen a double digit increase. But as I mentioned last week, we also see that the numbers are actually dipping here in the current quarter. Again, do I think this is a trend or a blip? I'm more on the blip side we still don't have more inventory even with the forbearance loosening up and people kind of moving around we're seeing rent increases and price increases in homes kind of regardless because there's just really a lack of inventory so until we can get that inventory up um, until interest rates maybe come up a little bit i don't know that we're going to see that demand go down or those prices go down but we'll see, uh, like, like you can see in those snapshots, the last quarter does show a little bit of decrease, but that's after a couple years of massive double digit growth. 
So again, real estate, you really can't lose with that kind of investment. Uh, the market today is a lot different than the market in 08 when that bubble happened. And uh, I know I've posted a few videos about uh, my opinion on what's what's going to be happening in the market and what will happen going forward in the market. You can always check those out in my video. Hey everyone, thank you again for tuning in to Living Umqua. I'm so happy you joined me. Remember to like and subscribe. Subscribe and like. I don't know. Hit the buttons down below if you like the video and you'd like to see more like it. I'm so glad you were with me today. Have a great rest of your week, Roseburg. I'll see ya.